Kidneys Kidneys are the primary organs of the urinary system that also includes ureters, urinary bladder and urethra. Gross Anatomy Kidneys are a pair of retroperitoneally located bean-shaped organs just below the ribcage in the posterior part of the abdomen, one on each side of the spine. The location of the right kidney is slightly lower because of the involvement of the liver on the right side. On the superior poles, adrenal glands are present on each kidney. In adults, the size of each kidney is about the size of one's fist. That is, 11 cm in length and 6 cm in width and weighs about 150 grams. A dense capsule called a renal capsule protects the kidneys. The medial border of the kidney is concaved and the center of the concavity is called renal hilus. Renal artery and nerves enter the kidney through hilum, whereas renal vein, lymphatics and ureter leaves the kidney through the hilum. Internal Structure of Kidneys When the kidney is cut vertically in half, two distinct regions are visible, the outer cortex and the inner medulla. Cortex The cortex is granular in appearance and includes all glomeruli, convoluted tubules and the collecting duct's cortical part of nephrons. Medulla the presence of a loop of Henle, a medullary portion of the collecting duct and blood vessels that are arranged in parallel, gives the medulla a striated appearance. The medulla is divided into 7 to 12 conical masses that appear in a radiating pattern called the renal pyramids. Medullary pyramids begin at the corticomedullary junctions and end in a papilla which is found within the minor calyx. Minor calyces unite to form the major calyx. The major calyces open into the renal pelvis which is the upper expanded portion of the ureter. The ureters exist from the hilus of each kidney and pass to the bladder. Microscopic Structure The basic structural and functional unit of the kidney is the nephron. Around 1.2 million nephrons are present in each human kidney. The nephrons are hollow tubes through which the blood is filtered and modified to finally form urine. A nephron consists of two major parts, renal corpuscle and a renal tubule. The renal tubule is a long complicated tubule that is divisible into the following parts. Proximal convoluted tubule PCT, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule DCT and collecting duct system. Each nephron segment is made up of a single layer of epithelial cells on the basement membrane that have been modified to perform specific transport functions. The nephron's total length varies between 45 and 65 mm. The Renal Corpuscle The renal corpuscle is a rounded structure comprising a glomerulus surrounded by a glomerular capsule. Glomerulus The glomerulus, a tuft of capillaries located in the initial dilated and cup-like portion of the tubule known as Bowman's capsule. The capillaries originate from afferent arterioles from the glomerulus 
and drain into the efferent arterioles. The glomerular capillaries are the only capillaries in the body that start with arterioles and end in arterioles. The capillaries are covered by epithelial cells called podocytes. Glomerular capsule The glomerular capsule, also known as Bowman's capsule, is the initial cup-like dilated portion of the nephron that accommodates the glomerulus. The capsule has two layers. The inner layer covering the glomerular capillaries is called the visceral layer and the outer layer is called the parietal layer. The podocytes form the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule. The parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule is formed by parietal epithelial cells. The space between visceral and parietal layers is called Bowman's space. Ultrastructure of glomerular membrane Glomerular membrane refers to the membrane that separates blood of the glomerular capillaries from the fluid present in the Bowman's space. It is also called the filtration barrier and consists of three major layers. Capillary endothelium The endothelium of glomerular capillaries is of fenestrated type as it contains fenestra, pores or windows. These pores are large in diameter, 50 to 100 nm in diameter, and therefore they freely allow the passage of large molecules through them. This allows water and small solutes like sodium, urea and glucose to pass through the capillary endothelium. Basement Membrane The basement membrane is made up of a meshwork of the fine fibrils entrenched in a gel-like matrix. As compared to the typical membranes, the glomerular basement membrane is very thick and it consists of proteoglycans which carry negative charge. No pores have been demonstrated in the basement membrane, however, its permeability corresponds to a pore size of about 8 nm. Bowman's Visceral Epithelium Bowman's Visceral Epithelium, or the inner layer of Bowman's capsule, which forms the third layer of glomerular membrane, is formed by special cells called podocytes. The podocytes have finger-like processes that encircle the outer surface of capillaries. The processes of podocytes interdigitate to cover the basement membrane and are separated by gaps called the filtration slits of approximately 25 nm diameter. Each filtration slit is covered by a layer of fine filaments that constitute the diaphragm. Mesangium This is an important component of the renal corpuscle. It consists of mesangium cells that are present between the capillary endothelial cells and the basement membrane. These cells provide structural support for the glomerular capillaries, secrete the extracellular matrix and exhibit phagocytic activity. The proximal tubule This is the initial segment of the nephron, hence called proximal tubule PT. As most of it is coiled, the proximal tubule is also called the proximal convoluted tubule PCT. The proximal tubule is divided into two parts. The initial major convoluted portion known as pars convoluta and the distal smaller straight portion known as pars recta. It ends in a small straight segment that continues to form a loop of Henle. The proximal tubule is about 15 mm long and 40 micrometer in diameter. 
Proximal tubule recovers most of the filtrate for its considerable capacity of reabsorption. The proximal tubular epithelial cells have extensive folding of the apical membrane. Also, the apical membrane contains microvilli, brush border. These microvilli create a large surface area to maximize the absorption and secretion of solutes in the filtrate, sodium, chloride, glucose, etc. These cells are rich in mitochondria as 80% of the reabsorption of filtered load by active transport take place in PCT. The adjoining epithelial cells are bound to each other by tight junctions at their luminal ends creating paracellular and basolateral spaces that help in the transport of solutes and water. Loop of Henle Loop of Henle LOH consists of descending and ascending limbs. The total length of the loop of Henle varies from 14 to 26 mm. Descending limb of loop of Henle is the continuity with terminal part of the proximal tubule. Descending limb continues into the thin segment where the epithelium is of attenuated flat cells. The length of the thin segment of the loop is 2 to 14 mm. From this segment arises the thick ascending limb of length 12 mm which is formed by low cuboidal epithelium. The cells of the ascending limb have numerous mitochondria and the basilar portions of their cell membranes are extensively invaginated. About 15% of filtrate is reabsorbed in the loop of Henle. Distal convoluted tubule The distal convoluted tubule DCT begins immediately after the thick ascending limb. It is 5 mm in length. DCT is characterized by low cuboidal epithelium with few scattered microvilli on the apical surface. However, these cells must also pump ions against their concentration gradient, so you will find large numbers of mitochondria, although fewer than in the PCT. Though DCT is relatively impermeable to water, Hormones like aldosterone and ADH facilitate its absorption in this segment. Connecting Segment The DCT empties into the collecting duct through the connecting segment or tubule. This is a small and relatively straight tubule with morphological and transport characteristics similar to that of the collecting duct. Collecting duct Several DCTs empty into the collecting duct. The collecting duct is 20 mm long and is lined by clear cuboidal epithelium. It passes through the cortex and medulla to empty into the pelvis of the kidney at the apex of the medullary pyramids. Thus, it is divided into two parts, cortical and medullary portions. The epithelial cells of the collecting duct are modified to participate in the transport of ions and water. Histological modifications are as follows. Collecting duct epithelium contains two types of cells, principal cells, P cells, and intercalated cells, I cells. P cells are more in number than I cells. P cells. The P cells have moderate basolateral enfoldings and few mitochondria. P cells, which increase the permeability of collecting tubule to water in the presence of ADH by increasing the pore size through aqua porin 2, are also involved in sodium reabsorption. I cells, I cells contain more microvilli, more basolateral enfoldings, and more mitochondria. They are involved in acid secretion and bicarbonate transport thus responsible for acidic urine. Few isils are also present in DCT.
Secretory Cells of Kidney The secretory or endocrine cells in the kidney are mainly two types. Juxta glomerular JG cells, interstitial cells IS cells. JG cells secrete renin that activates the renin angiotensin system. Interstitial cells IS cells. There are two types of interstitial cells, cortical and medullary. Cortical interstitial cells are of two types, phagocytic and fibroblast-like cells. Fibroblast-like cells, peritubular interstitial cells secrete erythropoietin. Medullary interstitial cells are of two types, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 medullary interstitial cells secrete prostaglandins, especially PGE2. Types of nephron Anatomically, there are two types of nephrons. Cortical nephrons, juxtamedullary nephrons. Difference between cortical and juxtamedullary nephrons. Juxtamedullary nephrons. Cortical nephrons. 15% of nephrons in the kidney are juxtamedullary nephrons. 85% of nephrons in the kidney are cortical nephrons. Juxtamedullary nephrons have a large size glomeruli which is located at the junction of the cortex and medulla of the kidney. Cortical nephrons have a small size glomeruli which is located in the renal cortex. Since glomeruli is large in juxtamedullary nephrons, they have high filtration rate. Since glomeruli is small, cortical nephrons have slow filtration rate. Juxtamedullary nephrons have a long loop of Henle which penetrates deep into the renal medulla before returning back to the cortex. Cortical nephrons have a short loop of Henle which penetrates only as far as outer layer of the renal medulla before returning back to the cortex. Both the descending and ascending limb of loop of Henle contain thin segments. The descending loop of Henle contain thin segments, while the ascending limb of loop of Henle contains thick segments. The blood supply in juxtamedullary nephrons is mainly manifest in the form of vasa recta. The blood supply in cortical nephrons is mainly manifest in the form of peritubular capillaries. Juxtamedullary nephrons play an important role in concentration of urine. Main function of cortical is excretion of waste products. Functions of kidney Urine formation and excretion of waste products The primary function of the kidneys is to filter the blood and excrete waste products in dissolved form in the urine. Kidneys form urine and excrete many toxic waste products like urea, uric acid, creatinine, ammonium chloride, urobilinogen, etc. Some drugs and toxins consumed are excreted in urine. In diabetes mellitus, glucose is excreted in urine. Thus, kidneys prevent their accumulation to a dangerous level in the body. Regulation of ECF volume Kidneys play an important role in the regulation of the ECF volume of the body. Many hormones such as aldosterone, ADH, ANP, angiotensin, etc. involved in the regulation of ECF volume act on kidney tubules to achieve this function. These hormones modify the reabsorption of sodium and water from kidneys to control ECF volume. Regulation of blood pressure BP Kidneys contribute mainly to the long-term regulation of blood arterial pressure. Renin secreted from the kidney activates the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone axis that plays an important role in the regulation of BP. Many hormones act on the kidney to regulate blood volume and pressure. Kidneys have also their intrinsic mechanisms to alter sodium and water excretion to regulate BP. 
regulation of electrolyte composition of body fluids. The composition of electrolytes in ECF is mainly the function of the kidney. Excretion and reabsorption of electrolytes from kidneys directly influence their concentration in ECF. Acid-base balance Kidneys contribute significantly to acid-base balance by controlling bicarbonate excretion and H plus secretion. Thus it controls the blood pH and pH of other body fluids. Therefore, kidney abnormalities may cause metabolic acidosis or alkalosis. Regulation of plasma osmolality By controlling the sodium chloride and water reabsorption, kidneys control plasma osmolality. Change in plasma osmolality provides a feedback signal for the secretion of ADH that acts on the kidney to regulate the osmolality. Regulation of erythropoiesis Erythropoietin, the major regulator of erythropoiesis, is secreted from interstitial cells in the peritubular capillary bed of the kidney. Therefore, kidney diseases result in anemia. Endocrine functions the kidney secretes many other hormones also in addition to the secretion of erythropoietin. Kidneys secrete renin that activates the renin-angiotensin system. Kidneys also form calcitriol, the active form of vitamin D3. This regulates blood calcium level. Bradykinin and prostaglandins are two local hormones which are secreted by kidney and this have influence on blood pressure regulation. Gluconeogenesis The kidneys are not the primary site of gluconeogenesis. In starvation, the synthesis of glucose from non-carbohydrate sources, especially from glutamine, occurs in these organs.